Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Carlos Vitrago Penzan, RTRVI. Welcome back to my channel, Lazy Bones Radiology. In today's episode, I'll be covering the different body cavities, the divisions of the abdomen, and the different types of body habitus. Before we begin, don't forget to press that like button and subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Let's begin. Body cavities. In the body, there's two main cavities known as the great cavities. These include the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. The following definitions were gathered from Merrill's Atlas of Radiographic Positioning and Procedures. This is a series that I used when I was a student, so I highly recommend it. The first cavity that I'll be talking about is the thoracic cavity. This subdivides into the mediastinum that contains the pericardial segment. Within the mediastinum, the esophagus, trachea, pericardium, heart, and great vessels, for example, the aorta and the pulmonary trunk, are located. Next, there's the two pleural portions. Within these portions, the lungs and pleural vessels are located. It is important to know the internal organs within each subdivision because being familiar with the anatomy will allow you to know how normal anatomy compares to an abnormal image. Let's practice. Here's a normal x-ray. Here's an abnormal chest x-ray. Do you spot the difference? As you can see here, I highlighted the hearts on both x-rays. On the left hand side, this is an average size heart. While on the right hand side, the heart is enlarged. This is known as cardiomegaly. Let's try this one. Do you spot the difference? As you can see here on the left one, you can see the lung markings indicating that the lung is present. While on the right hand side, the chest is hollowed out, no mar lung markings, which indicates a pneumothorax. Let's try this one. Just like I said before, lung markings, while on the right hand side, there's a lot of congestion and fluid buildup. This is COVID-19. Let's try this one. Do you see the difference? There's a, an enlargement of the aorta. This is known as a thoracic aneurysm. These are just examples to show how knowing the normal anatomy can be beneficial for your knowledge and being able to identify abnormalities, which will allow you to become a better tech next. Before we get to the second main cavity, there's a barrier that divides the two. The separation of the two cavities is the muscle known as the diaphragm. This muscle is very important because it is responsible in the ability for us to breathe. But as technologists, the diaphragm is important because it allows us to know if the anatomy of interest is within the picture. As you know, when you breathe in and out, the diaphragm moves, shifting the organs in different directions. For example, when you inspirate or breathe in, the diaphragm bellows down, pushing down against the abdomen. While when you expirate or breathe out, the diaphragm relaxes, compressing the, the lungs. Here's the examples of inspiration and expiration. During inspiration, lungs are expanding, while expiration, lungs are being compressed. As you can see, the level of the diaphragm is lower in, in the inspiration, while in the expiration is higher. As you can see here on the right hand side, we use expiration to identify pneumothorax within the chest cavity. The second main cavity is the abdominal cavity. This subdivides into the abdominal cavity, or the main part, and the pelvic cavity. These two cavities can be named separately or referred to as the abdominal pelvic cavity. Like I stated before, knowing the internal organs is very important, especially in the abdomen, where there is a multiple array of organs with unique qualities and structures. Organs within the abdomen include the peritoneum, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen, stomach, both the small and large intestine, kidneys, ureters, and major blood vessels. 
while in the pelvic cavities, this includes the rectum, urinary bladder, and the reproductive systems of both male or if you're talking about a female. Let's practice. Here's a normal abdominal x-ray. Here's an abnormal. Do you see the difference? Let's highlight the kidneys. Now do you see the difference? As you can see, on the right hand side, these are staghorn kidney stones. Let's try this one. Do you see the difference? As you can see on the right hand side, the abdomen is completely filled with air. This is known as a large bowel obstruction. Let's try this one. This was very, really interesting. Do you see what's wrong with the picture? This is known as a foreign body or a coin. Very common among children. Now, let's move on to the divisions of the abdomen. Now that we have reviewed the abdominal organs, we'll be covering the two ways the abdomen is subdivided to be studied or evaluated. First, we have the quadrants. This is the most common division of the abdomen. This splits the abdomen into four quadrants to identify the location of the abdominal organs or the pain where the patient might be experiencing. These include the right upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left upper quadrant, and left lower quadrant. As you can see, I'm highlighting the organs. If someone has pain in their right lower quadrant, you can identify which organs are within there. For example, if someone had their appendix it was about a burst, they'll have right lower quadrant pain. Next, the second division is known as the nine region division of the abdomen. This splits the abdomen into nine different regions to identify the location of the abdominal organs or the pain where the patient might be experiencing. This type of division is a lot more precise than the four quadrants. These include the right and left hypochondriac regions. Next is the epigastric region. Next is the right and left lumbar regions. In the middle, the umbilical region. This is where your belly buttons are located. Next, right and left iliac regions. And finally, the hypogastric region. It is important to be familiar with both of these because it will allow you to identify structures with precision and accuracy. Body habitus. Using these two types of subdivisions, we are able to identify the placement of organs. But as you may know, not everyone is built the same. In our final section, we'll be learning about the different body types or body habitus that you'll be seeing in your field. As future technologists, you're going to be encountering numerous amounts of people from all aspects of life and everyone will be unique in their own way. Body habitus is very important to know because it directly affects the location of major organs. These include the heart, lung, diaphragm, stomach, colon, and gallbladder. There are four types of body habitus. There's the sthenic, hyposthenic, asthenic, and hypersthenic. Let's begin with the sthenic body habitus. This is roughly 50% of the population, or the average. As you can see here in the diagram, the heart is moderately transverse, lungs are moderately length, diaphragm is moderately high, stomach is high left up upper quadrant, and colon is evenly spread out throughout the abdomen with slight dips of the transverse colon, known as the hepatic and splenic curvatures. Gallbladder is centered on the right upper quadrant, and here are some examples. This is a regular chest x-ray of a sthenic person. As you can see, right here, this is the hepatic flexure and splenic flexure. Next is your asthenic body habitus. This is 10% of the population. These are the very slender people. Their heart is nearly vertical and midline. Their lungs are long with the apices above the clavicles. The diaphragm is lower and the stomach is low and medial in the pelvis when standing. 
colon is very low and folds up on itself. Gallbladder is low and near the midline. Comparison to a stenic person, this is a asthenic person. As you can see here, normal size heart, very long and stretched out heart. Lungs are moderately lengthy, while an asthenic person, they are very long. Sometimes you have to take two chest x-rays, an upper and a lower, in order to get the full length of the lungs. Here's abdomen. As you can see, e equally dispersed, while on an asthenic person is much lower. Stomach is, is high, left upper quadrant, while on an asthenic person is more medial and, and stretched out. Hyposthenic body habitus. This is roughly 35% of the population and their slender build. The organs and characteristics are intermediate between a sthenic and an asthenic body habitus. So it's very difficult to classify. So this is your average, your sthenic people, your very slender or your asthenic population, and right in the middle is your hyposthenic people. As you see from going from left to right, the organs shift down. So as you can see, the heart is more elongated as you travel to the right hand side or you're more as asthenic. Stomach is the same way. And the gallbladder and the colon. Everything shifts down. Lastly, hypersthenic body habitus. This equates to 5% of the population. These are the bigger people where the heart is transverse and very high, lungs are short and transverse, diaphragm is very high, stomach is high and transverse in the middle, colon is very large and goes around the entire abdominal cavity, gallbladder is on the high right upper quadrant, and here's some examples. This is a, a sthenic person. Why hypersthenic person? As you can see, the, the heart and the lung difference between them. This is comparison to a asthenic personnel. Elongated heart, very smushed and transverse heart. Very elongated lungs, well, very smushed lungs. Here's an example of a asthenic BE. Well, on a hypersthenic person, you can see we barely fit the picture. Sometimes we have to take even four quadrants to get a hypersthenic person abdomen inside of the view as you can see the stomach layout on a sthenic person is on the left upper quadrant while a hypersthenic person their stomach is more medial and transverse these are some more examples between a asthenic and a hypersthenic make sure you get familiar with the different types of body habitus because it will allow you to be able to adapt and modify exams based on where the anatomy is located. Being familiar with the anatomy helps you identify abnormalities easier. This is a skill the radiologists use when they are diagnosing patient images. It is our job to obtain a diagnosable image that will help the radiologist see what is happening within the patient. We are not button pushers. There is an art in the field of radiography. That's why knowing your anatomy will allow you to become a skilled and valuable medical professional. My mentor, Dr. Tamala, one of the interventional radiologists that I work with, once told me, Carlos, the eyes do not see what the mind does not know. That's why reinforcing your an anatomy skills will make you a better tech in the field. I want to pass down these words of wisdom to you because it is a valuable lesson. This concludes today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned a lot about the body cavities, the different abdominal divisions, and the different types of body habitus. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. Have a great day.